Hi everyone! Today we're going to get started on painting our vector painting. Now we're going to make a value scale going from the mid-range or like our paint right out of the tube to the darker and to the lighter. We're going to do this in our sketchbook and then when we are ready to paint we're going to start painting our vector drawing that we've already done together. Okay, so let's get started. We're gonna go over how to clean a brush real quick. So when we are done painting, we're going to take our cup to the sink and just kind of dump out the water, give the cup a nice like clean over like that. If you need to use the brush to clean it out, you can. Then when it's clean, you're gonna put it back on the edge of the sink with the other cups, just put it right back on the stack. Then for your brushes, you're going to clean them in your hand. You just lightly go back and forth until they come out clean. And then you're gonna clean off the metal part, the fennel, and then squeeze the bristles together so that it gives it a nice point. Then you're gonna put them back where, in the cup where they came from. So let's go over that one more time. Clean in my, my hand, clean up the fennel, and I'm gonna squeeze the bristles together and then put it in the cup. Okay, so when we paint, we're going to need, always need a few things. We're going to need a water cup with paint brushes and we're going to need a paper towel. That's because when we paint, we're going and we clean our brush, we're going to want to um, always dry off our brush. Now let's talk paint. When we get paint, you're gonna have these wedges for your paint in your palette. When we get paint, we need just a little bit. I did my whole vector painting with just a tiny bit of paint, uh, mostly for all of the colors. Okay, so I'm gonna get my white. Let's see, that's about a dime size. I'm gonna get my color. Now, it's possible you could make, you could do the whole thing in black and white and grays and a gray scale, it's up to you. So I've got my color and then I've got my black. Okay, so I only got about a dime size for each. Um, you can always go back and get more. And if there's any left on your palette that's clean at the end, um, we're gonna put it back in. But Really, if you get just a little bit, then you're just gonna throw this way at the end of the class. All right, and then you're gonna have an extra wedge or two for paint mixing. You might have two, one for light and one for dark. Now, when you get your brushes, let's talk brushes. Okay, so we've got a flat brush. Now, a flat brush um, obviously is flat. This is about a um, half, um, a half inch and it has the number 10 on it. So it's a, it's a 10 brush. Now, when we paint, you try not to get it near the metal part, um, the fennel of the brush. You want it to stay on the bristles. You also want the bristles to stay pretty um, much together when you're painting. So when you paint, you paint in um, the same direction that your bristles are going, like that. Now also, I have got a smaller brush, um, a small round brush, and this is gonna be for our um, details at the end. The key to making the vector look really good is to actually go back at the very end and get those lines nice and crisp. If you don't, it's just not gonna look quite right. It's gonna look a little bit off. And then I've got a smaller flat brush too. So if you find that you're having a hard time uh, staying within those triangles, then um, get a smaller brush. That just means, you know, big brushes for big spots and smaller brushes for smaller spots, okay? All right, to make our value scale in our sketchbook, we are going to, I'm gonna put my paint over here. I'm going to take a ruler and, oops, Got paint on my paper, it's okay. And we're just going to draw, you could use the width of your ruler, I kind of wanted mine a little bit wider, so I'm gonna just draw a line and then a line up higher, try to make them pretty much parallel. 
And then you don't have to use a ruler. I just like to because I like things to look clean. Then you're gonna draw about seven spaces but on these lines. So I start with the middle one and then I use about the width of the ruler, maybe a little bit bigger. And I'm gonna draw uh, three more boxes on either side. So one, two, three more boxes. Okay, so I have a total of seven boxes. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're going to take our flat brush, our number 10 flat brush, and it doesn't have to be 10, it could be an eight or a 12, it's just kind of around there. And we're going to take, so when I get wet, after it's been wet, I'm gonna put it on my towel and kind of dry it off. I'm gonna take a little bit of the straight color. So you have a choice of if you wanna use blue, or yellow or magenta or purple. You can use whatever color you want, but make sure you remember the name of the color. You could even write it down in your sketchbook because there are a few different blues and a few different reds and a few different yellows. So you wanna make sure that you're always getting the, the same one from day to day or even just within the same class period because it could really, it'll completely change your painting if you start mixing yellows and oranges and reds and stuff, okay? So in the middle box, I painted my color straight out of the tube, my sky blue. Okay, now I'm going to take, I'm actually not gonna get any more blue, I'm just gonna take what's on the brush, add a tiny dab of white to it, and I'm gonna start painting the space next to it. Okay, so if I run out of paint, I can either dab it a little bit more in both colors, or I can just get a little bit of water. Now we're gonna use water for um, smoothing out our colors. So a lot of times to get the colors to blend really well, we're going to just add a little bit of water to it. Okay, now I'm gonna go on to the next color. So I'm gonna get more white in this and a tiny bit of blue. Now I can mix it on my palette if I want, or I can just mix it in the, um, in the, on the paper. Now I notice this gets really blue, so I'm gonna clean my brush and I'm gonna start to kind of mix this. Now, that blue is gonna be a lot stronger than the white. So I'm gonna add a little bit more white to it and mix this. So it's kind of like watercolor that sometimes when you have enough on your brush, you just have to add water to it or white to it and it kind of extends it. Okay, and then for the last part, I'm going to just get mostly white. There was already a little bit of blue in the white, so I decided to use that. And I'm going to just paint mostly white with a tiny bit of blue that was on my brush. Okay, now I'm gonna do the opposite direction. When you're using black, it was like the blue with the white. It, just a little bit of blue goes a long way. Well, with black, it's the same thing. Just a little bit of blue, black goes a long way. So I'm gonna get some blue and a tiny bit of black. That's, yeah, that wasn't too bad, was it? Okay, so I have a little bit of blue on my brush and a little bit of black. Now, um, I'm doing something called double loading, where I put the colors on my brush and then I mix it on my paper. Okay, instead of mixing it on my palette, you'll notice that I haven't even used what's on my palette yet. Okay, I'm gonna pick up that black that I put down and then some more blue, and I'm going to mix these on my paper. And I just need a tiny bit more black. Mix it on my palette. And then I'm gonna go to the darkest color. So I just kind of go a few strokes on my palette and a few strokes the other way. And then I mix it on my palette. Ooh, that's a lot of black. 
Okay. Now, if I notice that it's really not enough of a change, then I'll go get a little bit more black because I can always add black, but it's really hard to take it away. And then I've got my darkest color. Okay, you're gonna notice that I don't really mix when there is a light blue and I wanna make it darker, I always add blue. I don't add black because that's gonna to start to make my blues look gray because when there's ever black and white together, it's gonna to start to make it grayer. So I try to either add, if I wanna make it darker, I add the straight blue or if I wanna make it lighter, I add the white together. And then in the squares where, or the triangles where there's more dark, I only add a little bit of black or a little bit of blue. I never add white to it to lighten it. Okay, that's very key. Right. Now that I have my value scale, I'm going to start painting my vector painting. Now for my vector painting, um, this key is going to be, um, it's going to be very important. It's also going to be important that I remember which way it's going. So um, I could tape it to my painting if I want so that I can remember it's always going to go this direction. Might have to move it though as I'm painting because I always want this top to be this top. Otherwise it's going to get confusing and it's not going to look right. If you notice on this picture, can you tell where the light is coming from? So look on your vector drawing. Can you see where the light is coming from? I would say that it's mostly coming from this direction. And if I start to move it around and as I'm rotating it and I'm not keeping up with this, my light's gonna not be coming from the right direction and it's gonna start to look funny. Also with this image, you're gonna notice that there's always a variation between triangles. So even though it's a lighter triangle, it still has some darker parts. It's lighter in the corner and then it gets a little bit darker. So it's important that every time that you paint a triangle, that you paint it, there's gotta be a lighter part and a darker part and you see which way it's going from light to dark. Okay, so we're gonna start with a dark triangle. I would suggest starting with one quadrant, painting it, and then moving on to the next quadrant so you don't get confused. Not that you would get confused, but so you don't get confused. Okay, so I'm gonna take my flat paintbrush and I'm gonna paint this dark uh, triangle right here. So like I said, if I want it dark, I'm gonna take a little bit of blue and I'm also said that I might have two wedges. I might have a light wedge and a dark wedge and I'm gonna add a little bit of blue and a tiny bit of black. I can always add more black if I need to. And I might wipe off a little bit on my palette and then I'm just going to lightly kind of blend this. Also, if I need to extend my paint just a little bit, I can add a little bit of water to it too. Okay, so once I've got a dark color, see I'm just mixing, I'm trying to keep it in one spot, so about a quarter, I'm not painting the whole palette because I'm gonna go through a lot of triangles that way. I'm going to start painting my vector painting. Let me see if I can get this, move all this over, get this over here. Okay, so for my vector painting, I'm going to start here and I'm at, it's important that my bristles stay together and I'm going to lightly go down this line. So when I turn my flat brush this way, I can get a pretty skinny line. And I'm going to outline where it's darkest. Oops. Now if I go over it, it's not a big deal, but I'm gonna have to go back and clean that up probably when it dries a little bit. Okay, so it's a lid, it's darker here, and then it gets a little bit lighter towards the edge. So I'm gonna add a little bit of blue to it and mix in the blue and I can mix it on my paper. All right, now to get that smooth looking, I might add just a little bit of water and I'm going to try to blend that on my piece of paper. 
Okay, clean up that edge a little bit. You see how my bristles are staying together? I'm trying to keep my fennel clean. Okay, now for the um, this triangle over here, it's also dark, so I'm gonna give it a little bit of water, wake up what I had already mixed, add a little bit of blue, tiny bit of black, and I'm gonna mix it on my palette. Same thing though, it's gonna start dark up here. Forgot to mention, you're gonna need paint mats from um, the back. So paint mats are by the uh, pencil sharpener. And as it gets lighter, I'm gonna add more blue to it. See how I woke up that um, water a little bit. And my blue is gonna go along this edge and up to the other edge. There we go. Now, if I feel like that needs to get a little bit darker, I can always add more dark. So I'm gonna start dark up here. I'm gonna have to paint off the page. That's why the paint mat is so important. And I can just keep adding a little bit more dark until I feel like it's dark enough and it's blended enough like that. Okay, now for a light triangle. Now for a light triangle, I said I'm gonna kind of keep my wedges separate. I'm gonna clean my brush really good because I wanna get that black off because I don't wanna mix the black and white. Okay, I'm gonna get a little bit of blue and a little bit of white. I get a lot of bit of white, okay? All right, and this is gonna be, this is still kind of like my medium tone. I'm gonna clean that a lot. And I'm just going to take, I'm gonna take my white first. I'm gonna paint lightest to darkest. And I'm gonna paint my white right here. Okay, and then I'm gonna get a little bit of the blue a lot of bit of blue and I'm gonna mix it on my paper like that okay so that's my light part of my triangle and then it's gonna go into this medium part right here again I'm trying to keep my edges dark I mean crisp and I see a lot of blue right there so I'm gonna pick up that blue Blend it like that. Okay, now I'm in a position where I um, I need to kind of blend these together and I need a little bit more paint. So I can take a little bit of water and kind of smooth that out so it looks like a smooth transition. Like that. All right, now I have a dark triangle so I'm going to switch to my dark palette. And so I'm gonna take some blue, mix it to what I already had. I need a little bit more dark. So for my color value scale, it's really very dark. So I want to get it pretty dark and then I'll add some blue to it. Okay, so I'm gonna paint. Let me get the edges really good. Paint like this. And then I'm gonna go to blue. So I'm gonna take a little bit lighter blue or the, the straight blue and I'm gonna paint from this edge. This way, and this way. And mix the two. 
So they're gonna meet kind of about here. It looks like it even gets lighter towards the bottom. So I'm gonna take a little bit of blue and mix that in up this way. Now, if I have trouble kind of getting my colors to meld, I might take a little bit of water and kind of smooth that out. Okay, this looks, there we go. Like that. All right, I'm almost done with that quadrant. When I um, am done either at the very end or I've done several squares, I'll take my thin brush and I'm going to just lightly crisp up those lines. This is something you're gonna really wanna pay attention to before you submit, because I will send it back and say, you need to take a thin brush and just lightly go over your lines. Okay, if you find that your lines are getting off and off and off, let it dry, go back and connect the dots with the ruler like we did from the very beginning and draw a line and then um, with a brush, you know, on the dark side, paint very, with the thin brush paint, the dark line, let it dry, and then go back and do the white line. Sometimes when you, if you start on this side of your painting, if you start on the right side and work clockwise, you're going to start to, um, once you get back around to this and it's time to paint the lighter part, um, it'll be dry. So if you kind of work methodically around your picture, then when you get back to this side of your painting, it'll be ready to work with a different color with the lighter. I mean, you start lighter and then you go darker because then you don't really have to wait for it to dry. Okay, so that's it for today. Um, we will review and um, just be looking at your Art Sonia for comments once you've submitted. And um, I look forward to seeing your paintings.